Hello everyone, this is going to be the last video in the OT tutorial series and in this video I want to talk a little bit about what resources you can use when developing O3 experiments and what might be some steps you want to take after this tutorial series to further improve your skills with O3. So first of all, the most important resource on O3 is the official documentation which you can find here at o3.readthedocs.io um, and this documentation that provides an overview over all the features that O3 has and now that you went through some basic tutorials you will be able to understand everything here quite easy um, and I would strongly suggest that you basically read through the entire thing once so that you are aware of all the more advanced features of O3 that I haven't covered in the basic tutorials Yep. Um, and also every time when you develop and you don't remember exactly how the code for something looks like for example let's say you want to hide pages and you, you're not sure anymore that if the syntax is, is displayed or something else you can easily just go to the site you can go to pages for example and here on pages it will provide you an overview over all the functions and you can remember that the syntax is like this for is displayed like this for was for template and like this for before next page and similarly you have an overview over all the different model fields here details about forms so basically everything that you would need is here um, then second most important thing if you ever end up having any questions or you're getting an error message that you don't understand there is a Google group for O3 in which you can get help um, just, so it's I mean, it's found under this link but you can also just Google O3 and Google group and I will provide a link in the video description as well. Um, and so basically Chris who wrote O3 is very active there and some other very experienced users are active in the group. So usually you get an answer within a couple of hours um, and it's very helpful if you have trouble with developing your experiments. The next thing is something called O3 Hub which makes some parts of the development process a bit easier. So first of all you have O3 Studio, which is kind of a point and click interface in which you can develop simple O3 experiments. So just have a look at that. I haven't worked with O3 Studio a lot, so I'm not an expert on this. But basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to create O3 apps in your browser. For example, here I created a simple survey app. And let's say I want to add a form field to this. I could just click here and I could type plus load, uh, float field, name it test, um, give it an initial value of let's say 25 uh, or 34 um, and um, yeah, now I'm not sure I could do any save it, no. So now it's just there. As you can see I'm, I'm not very experienced with this but this could help you if you want to develop some simple experiments um, and you you don't want to do the coding yourself um, and so the the functionality of of um, O3 Studio at least as far as I know is a bit limited so you cannot do everything in O3 Studio that you could do while coding yourself but it is possible to start an app in O3 Studio just set up the basic fields and then download the app and open it in in your editor like PyCharm for example and then do the more complicated functionality in PyCharm. So um, it is definitely a possible starting point but my suggestion if, if you want to keep working on Otri and want to develop a lot of experiments at some point I think you will be at just as fast if not faster if you just start working out in PyCharm and do everything there instead of if you start working with Otri Studio. Um, then another feature from OT Hub is Heroku server deployment. So th as you might remember in the last video I showed you how you can um, put your code onto Heroku and there's a very simple way to do this via OT Hub. Um, so you can just connect your OT Hub and your Heroku account, upload an OT file onto OT Hub and then it's automatically deployed to Heroku. But the big downside of this is that um, at least as of the time recording this video, if you use the free plan, you can only get your experiment on if it's public. 
So that means that it will be listed in the list of public projects down here. Um, and people will be able to try it out. Um, and at least for me, especially when I'm while I'm developing uh, and I have an unfinished experiment that I might want to host on Heroku just to test or to send it to a co-author, um, I don't think it makes sense to have my unfinished work published on this public project list. So I would be a bit hesitant to use this feature. And there is a way to get private apps, but uh, that is a subscription-based service that I think costs $9 per month, around that. Um, but yeah, if you, if you uh, looked at the server uploading video and you think this is not something you want to do, you might want to use this service either in the free or the paid version. And then finally, public projects. So this is just a list of a lot of poultry projects, basically, um, which you can try out and download download the code. So if you have, um, if you want to develop an experiment, it, it might be a good starting point to go to this list, uh, use, I don't know, scroll, scroll through it, and um, I think there's no search function and see if there is something that is similar to what you want to do, um, but you could use as a starting point, then you can just download the code and try it out. So that is kind of all in terms of O3 specific resources. And another thing that I would suggest is that you spend some time learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And these are all web development languages, so you would put them in your template files in your O3 projects and I want to briefly explain what they do. So HTML is used to structure websites. Um, so here we can actually see an HTML example. You would use HTML to kind of put a title somewhere. You would use this P tag for paragraphs. If you remember our prisoner's dilemma experiment, we use HTML to make a table. Um, so HTML is kind of designed to structure your website and to have to place elements like, like tables or lists on it. Um, then next thing we have CSS and CSS is designed to style websites. So in CSS you would do things like change text colors, change font sizes, space out uh, elements. So maybe you won't have two tables and you want an empty space in between. So you would use CSS to do that. Um, you could use CSS to put borders in tables things like that, basically everything that is done uh, in terms of designing. Some of these things you could also do with HTML. So HTML, for example, changing text colors is also something that you could do in HTML. Um, but this is more like for historical reasons. So nowadays you would usually want to use CSS for everything that is style related. Um, and then finally JavaScript. So JavaScript is used to directly like change websites without subjects going to a new page. So usually websites are quite static. If you load a page, then you can read it and you can maybe click a button that gets you to the next page. But with HTML and CSS, at least usually nothing changes on the site um, um, unless you go to a new site. This is also not 100% true anymore because nowadays you can also have some changing elements directly done with HTML. But this is at least like mostly true. Um, and for example, if you wanted to, in O3, let's say you have your instructions and then you have some more detailed instructions that you don't think are necessary for everyone to read, but that you still want to provide in case people are interested, then you could um, type out these instructions and hide them initially um, and then use JavaScript to later on show them to the participants that click a button that says show these elements. So you could change something on the web page without the subjects getting to a new web page. Um, and otherwise, uh, JavaScript is basically like a fully fledged programming language. So most of the things that you could do in Python, you could instead also do in, in JavaScript on the template file. But I would suggest that you use Python as much as possible and only do stuff in JavaScript that you really need to do in JavaScript. And then a couple of other use cases for JavaScript are that there are a lot of libraries for JavaScript that allow you to do things like visualizations, for example. So if you want to display subjects, some data in a chart, um, there's, there are JavaScript libraries that allow you to do that. And 
you could also do other things like for example complicated form validations in JavaScript so let's say users are not allowed to to make a lot of different inputs you have a field where they could enter a text but you only want them to enter one of a couple of very specific texts then you could for example use JavaScript to check the input and automatically delete it and say tell the subject that the input is not allowed um, once once they made it if it's not allowed um, okay so this is kind of my suggestion for the way ahead learn a bit of CSS and HTML and JavaScript obviously you don't need to go through the entire tutorials because you don't really want to become a web developer you just want to use a little bit of this to make your Otri experiments look nicer and a bit more functional um, and then use the documentation basically to familiarize yourself with all the features of Otri so this was kind of all I wanted to talk about in this tutorial but one final thing that I want to mention is that I do sometimes give workshops in Otri so in case you like this tutorial series but you think you want a little bit more of an in-depth introduction you think other people at your department might also profit from learning Otri feel free to contact me I will provide contact details and I I would be happy to travel to most places to give workshops mainly in Europe because I don't think it's it's necessary or worse for me to come to the US for this and I'm sure you will find someone else outside of Europe who can give similar workshops um, yeah but that was really the end of this tutorial series thank you all so much for watching